The input process output diagram. Let's take a deeper dive just into the output side. Now, if you've used the SIPOC before, then your version of what you usually brainstorm for outputs is gonna be a little bit different. Rather than focusing on the products and services here, what we're gonna focus on are the measures. Our often those critical to quality measures. So if you've done a voice to the customer or a CTQ exercise before this, it's a great opportunity to use that information here. But what we're really gonna talk about is those measures that tell us whether our process is performing well or not performing well. How do we know if it's a good day or a bad day? And how can we measure that? So this is a way that we can start that conversation. You may wanna use that CTQ, or you may wanna use something else to help your team brainstorm this. But these are the questions that I ask and how I go about it. So the IPO starts with that process. You're always gonna start with that center to center the team around the process you're focused on. Now you're gonna scope that so you know where you start and where you end so that you're just focused on those items. So in this case, we're gonna talk about a dinner service. Now you can see here, I haven't said a good dinner service, a bad dinner service, it's just a dinner service because we don't wanna qualify that. What we're talking about right now is just how the process is performing. We're not saying the process is performing well or not well, that's what we're gonna find out as we look at our outputs and go actually get data for those outputs. This activity is something that you would do in your define phase of your DMAIC project and is an excellent replacement to your SIPOC ac activity. It's a really good way to get people talking and maybe going a little bit deeper into the process. It's surprising how many people have different perceptions of what good and bad look like or how we're measuring those things. So in this example, dinner service. So our dinner service is going to start when our customer is seated. It's going to end when the payment for the meal is processed. So now we're going to move with the team over to those outputs. So if we were leading this with a team, what's great about this is things like this QDCS, quality delivery cost or safety, that helps us as the facilitator kind of have some ideas of questions that we could ask. So what tells us that it's a quality dinner service? When you go out to dinner and you say, that was a really good dinner, what are some of those things? So maybe in this case, maybe quality is um, uh, no meals sent back. Or let's actually go a little bit deeper and say number of meals sent back per night. Now what's good about normalizing this is that we can immediately start to see if we get the data, how are we gonna put that down in our data? How are we gonna actually make that visual? How are we gonna graph that, right? So by qualifying this or normalizing this, it allows us to start that conversation. Delivery. Well, maybe for our customers and dinner service, uh, if they take, um, so minutes maybe from ordering to receiving food, right? So the minutes it takes from ordering to receiving food. Now we don't know how many minutes that is yet because we haven't gone and got the data, but that might be something we wanna go get the data for. Dinner service. <clears throat> so maybe this is the um, average uh, nightly revenue. Right, so if we got that for each night, we would be able to see over time how that process is performing. Now, safety or security is kind of a hard one for people, but safety really, uh, regardless of what project we're working on, it's important that you call out safety and security. As a continuous improvement professional, sometimes people can see us as, um, maybe not looking out for the full process, maybe not looking out for some of those secondary things that could cause problems. And as a result, a lot of times people say, oh, they broke the process or it wasn't broken, why did they fix it? Safety and security is one of those that we definitely don't ever want people to say that about. It's also something that we always wanna keep in our mind and always wanna be visible. So safety here for the dinner service, that might be number of health code, fines, <laughs> or I guess that might be dollars in health code uh, fines. From health code violations. 
So now that we have a few going, you and your team can continue to brainstorm these. I'd say around 10 is where you would want to stop. Probably about 5 to 10 is going to be that sweet spot of where you want to stay. Once you get over 7, it starts to get a bit too many. Um, but the other thing that we want to qualify here is number of meals sent back per night. So maybe through a result of this project or overall with the process, what we would want to see is that number go down from where it is right now, right? So this gives us an idea of if we make changes and that goes up, that might be concerning to us. Minutes from ordering to receiving food. So maybe we want that to go down or it's not really the focus of this project. So we want that to go down or we want it to stay the same. Average nightly revenue, that one we want to go up. Fines from health code violations, this one actually with safety and security quite often, you might wanna call out that you wanna keep that at zero, that that needs to stay at zero. So you could put something like that there. Now that we have all of these, we're coming to the end of our define phase. And the next phase coming up is measure. So as we talked about, you could go get data for all of these, but getting data is costly. It's expensive to go get data. So rather than saying like, let's all go out and get all of this data, what we wanna do is we wanna identify what our big focus is here. Now on this project that focuses on the dinner service process, the problem is actually that people aren't spending enough for us to, to even out, for us to really make a profit. So what we want to see is in this project, we want to see that average nightly revenue increase. That's the main focus. So we're going to go ahead and put that star there. And we know that that means that we really need to go out and get that data. So if you're doing this in your defined phase meeting, you now know that you need to go out and have somebody get that data. You can assign somebody in the meeting and the defined phase meeting to go get that. Once you've done this, then you're ready to go ahead and jump to your inputs and start brainstorming all of the things that go into your process that could cause your average nightly revenue to go up or down.